Today, we'll be designing and making a layered spider web mandala with a jack-o'-lantern inspired cover. Using my iPad Pro, Apple Pencil, and Adobe Illustrator, I slowly sketch the outline of a jack-o'-lantern with the pencil tool. This creates a vector line which we can select, thicken, and use for laser cutting. I'm not the best at hand drawing, but I take my time and I hit the undo button more times than I can count. Once the sketch is complete, I set up my laptop, load up Adobe Illustrator, and import the file that I just sketched. I carefully adjust some points to smooth out the line work and adjust the thickness of each line. The idea is to make the lines thick enough so we can select the path and use the Create Outline tool to automatically get the perimeter of the line. At this point, you can trim all the overlapping lines to create one solid shape. My preference is to do all of this in Rhinoceros. After importing the jack-o'-lantern drawing from Illustrator into Rhino, I select all of the lines, use the trim command, and I click on all the lines that I want to remove. The goal here is to have a silhouette so that we can see the layered mandala through the jack-o'-lantern. All pieces of the jack-o'-lantern should be connected so that the cutout is in one single piece. To do that, we use the vertical curved lines that represent the lines that separate the curved exterior parts of a pumpkin. With the silhouette complete, I highlight all of the lines and use the join command to get closed shapes. This will help with creating a 3D model to test the design and laser cutting. Now that the pumpkin is finalized, the next step is developing the spider web mandala. I've never drawn a spider web before, but I figured it was based on a series of curves. To create them, I drew three lines that were 10 inches at 15 degree angles and divided them by roughly 16 points. Using the spline tool, I connected one point on each line, which created the curve. I repeated this step until I had a curve drawn at each point. With the curves complete, I offset each of them in the same direction by one quarter of an inch to give them thickness. I offset the guidelines by one eighth of an inch and used the trim command to clean up the shapes. Using the mirror command, I duplicated the shapes around a circle to create the web. The next part of the process is combining the spiderweb mandala with the jack-o'-lantern silhouette. To do this, I overlaid the mandala on top of the pumpkin and moved it around until I was satisfied with its location. You won't see this in the video, but I decided to scale down the mandala so that the offset lines were 0.2 inches instead of 0.25. This tightened up the pattern and made it fit a lot better in the jack-o'-lantern silhouette. When I was satisfied with its location, I selected all of the lines, copied it down to a new location, and used the trim command to clean up all the lines outside of the perimeter of the pumpkin and within the frame. I also trimmed the lines to connect the ends of the mandala to the frame so that it could be cut in one piece. After the drawing was cleaned up, I selected all of the lines and joined them together. I copied the combined mandala and jack-o'-lantern frame down, offset the internal shapes by one eighth of an inch, deleted the original shapes, and joined the resulting lines together. I repeated this one more time to create three layers of the mandala. The last step was to delete everything except for the exterior outline of the pumpkin. This will be the base of the layered mandala art. Now that the drawings are complete, I gather my sheets of walnut plywood that I bought from Glowforge and my maxi cure glue, which I'll be using to join all of the panels together. I turn on my Glowforge, open the lid, insert the material, and load up my laptop. I import the first file into my Glowforge app and start the process of laser cutting each sheet. It's amazing to see the drawing that I developed by hand, then on my computer, coming to life with the laser cutting through the wood with precision. Each layer took less than 10 minutes with the longest cutting time being the top mandala layer. However, the laser cutting process actually took longer because my Glowforge air filter was at the end of its life and it wasn't getting rid of the smoke fast enough. Fortunately, Glowforge has a setting that senses the temperature within the machine and when it's getting too hot for it to function properly, it'll pause the machine every two minutes to let the smoke clear out and cool down the machine. Sometimes, it takes a little bit longer depending on where your Glowforge is located. Rather than purchasing a new air filter replacement, 
I decided it was time to purchase an inline fan, better ducts, and a Y elbow so it can share my dryer's exhaust vent. Depending on timing and how quickly I need to get it installed, I might be able to put together a video explaining why I'm going with an inline fan rather than using the filter. If you're interested, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. To cut all of the sheets for this project, it takes about 30 minutes. If you're interested in purchasing a Glowforge laser cutter for yourself, you can scroll down to the description section of this video where I'll share a link that'll get you up to $500 off of a Glowforge Pro. Once all of the pieces were cut, I brought them over to my work table and organized them from the bottom layer upwards to make sure that the design was working as intended. Carefully remove the paper masking tape that comes pre-applied onto the proof grade materials from Glowforge. The pieces with smaller cutouts were easier to remove, but I went a little slower with the sheets that had thinner pieces. It's important to pay attention to the material when it flexes so that you don't pull too hard and snap it. With the masking tape off, I bring over my Maxi Cure super glue and carefully apply it onto the back of the second to last piece. I align it with the bottom piece and press down throughout the sheet so that they can bond together. As the lines in the mandala get thinner, I decided not to apply glue on the entire cutout but instead, I applied the glue on all the straight lines from the center of the spider web to the perimeter and also on some of the curved lines. For the jack-o'-lantern top, I apply the glue only to the perimeter of the silhouette and leave all the other internal pieces untouched. With careful planning and more time, I could check where the silhouette lands on a spiderweb mandala and apply a drop of glue, but I decided it was enough to only adhere the perimeter. I aligned the top with the layered mandala and carefully pressed down to bond the sheets together. I make sure I stay away from the nose of the jack-o'-lantern because it's not supported by anything else below. This layered mandala project is one that I've wanted to design and make for a very long time. I'm always inspired by the beautiful work other creators like you are making with their laser cutters and other machines. Now, I have one of my own that's just in time for the fall season and Halloween. If you enjoyed this video, you'll love this playlist that I created of all my popular laser cut wood projects. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you again next week.